welcome back. It's another great day, isn't it? Well, have any of you been to a cookout yet this spring? Awesome. Well, even if you haven't, we know that we are waiting for summer and it's going to be fun with lots of cookouts and picnics. And sometimes we have to wait to eat hot dogs or popsicles or play fun games. And this month we're talking all about waiting. More specifically, how we can wait. You see, we have to wait for something and you've got a choice to make. You can grumble and complain, or you can wait with patience. And our story today is all about being patient and waiting. And we can remember that when you think you can't wait any longer, think twice and God will help us have patience. to wait for all the things that I want. Sometimes I kind of feel like it's just taking too long to get the things I want, what I think you need, but I know you know what's best for me. I'm gonna live what I believe. I'm gonna wait cause I know you're still working. I'm gonna have patience cause it'll be worth it. I'm gonna have faith, I know you have a purpose. That you're working it out I'm gonna hold up Slow down I'm gonna trust That you're working it out Welcome to Story Lab. This week we're talking about patience. Huh, I see what you did there. Plus some real fruit ninja action and the most expensive bowl of soup of all time. Ooh, this intro is making me hungry. Let's go. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. And today, we're talking about patience. Which is waiting until later for what you want now. Hey, Zeke, do you want a chocolate bar? <laughs> of course. Wait, is this some kind of trick question? It is a trick question. I knew it. How so? Because you can have this chocolate bar now. Okay. Or. Oh, here comes the trick. Or you can have an even bigger chocolate bar. There's gotta be some catch. If? If you wait until later. Well, how big? 
Can't say. Ugh. Well, how long do I have to wait? But I don't like waiting. Oh, you might even say. Here we go. I have a weighty problem. Well, here's the thing to remember. No one is making you wait. You really can have this chocolate bar now. It's totally up to you. Okay, I'll wait. I mean, this is good, but if I hold out, I'll get something even better, right? Yes, you will. So, waiting. Yep. Just gonna do some good old fashioned waiting. Mm hmm. The old way to Rooney. Yep. Wait, should we call it? Mm hmm. Waity Wick McWaiterson. That's right. Just. Gonna keep on waiting. Wanna blow up a watermelon? That works. Let's do it. To explode a watermelon, we'll need. Wait, no, let me guess. A watermelon? Yep. I got one left over from my family's cookout. Hey, watch this. Ding. And rubber bands. Oh. Ding. Nope. More. More? Ding. Not yet. What? Yeah. Ooh, that is a lot of rubber bands. Yeah, indeed. We'll need as many as 500 or even more. And just for fun. Now, we start putting on the rubber bands. There goes the first one. Oh yeah, we got many, many more to put on. Oh. Okay, so when do we get to the explosion part? Well, when these rubber bands are stretched out, they contain potential energy. But when they eventually contract, what was potential will become real. That action is called kinetic energy. Huh, so potential energy is stretched and kinetic energy is boom. Now. Less talking, more rubber banding. Okay, that's 200 rubber bands. Time for a break? Well, is it time for my chocolate bar? No. What about now? Well, I just realized what this experiment is really about. And what's that? Patience. Ah, oh, tricked into learning. Hey, do you think it's starting to crack? Ooh, ooh. Right there. No, it's just wishful thinking. Huh. Well, I guess we gotta keep going. Let's go. Okay. Yeah, and right on the center. Yep. All right. All right. Hey, wait a second. We're all out of rubber bands. Hey, but you've got more rubber bands, right? At the store? You mean we can't finish? You're gonna have to just wait a little longer. No! But while we wait, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of Genesis, where it all began. God created an amazing world, but people turned away from God and chose to go their own way. God chose a man named Abraham and promised to bless the whole world through his family. But this didn't happen right away. Abraham and his wife Sarah had to wait. And wait. And wait. Finally, after years and years of waiting, Abraham's son Isaac was born. And when Isaac grew up, he and his wife Rebecca also had to wait a long time for a family. But at last, they had twin boys, Jacob and Esau. And that is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. In the book of Genesis, we meet twin brothers. 
Esau was born first, and he was very hairy. Minutes after Esau, Jacob was born, and he was very not hairy. Hey, do you have any uh, brothers or sisters? Do you sometimes fight with them? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, Esau and Jacob wrestled with each other before they were even born. And while these brothers may have had the same mom and dad, (laughs) that's where their similarities ended. Esau was a hunter, which he may have learned from his dad. And there was nothing Esau loved more than being out in nature. The wilder and more dangerous, the better. Meanwhile, Jacob was just the opposite. He just preferred hanging out closer to home. In fact, he was his mom's favorite and became quite a chef. One son wild, the other one mild. So one day Jacob was cooking some stew outside the tent where his family lived when his hairy, dusty, and probably smelly brother Esau showed up. Now Esau had been out hunting all day. He was hungry, he was angry, he was hangry. Hey, bro, I am starving. Give me some of that red stew you're cooking up. Oh, but not so fast, because while Esau smelled food, Jacob smelled an opportunity. For real, I'm gonna literally die. I haven't eaten in hours. Give me some food. You want some of this? This delicious, steaming, savory stew? Bruh. Okay, you can have this food, but uh, only as a payment. You have to sell me your rights as firstborn. Pause button. Rights as a firstborn? What does that mean? Well, at this time, the oldest son in a family was always given certain privileges that his younger brothers wouldn't get. Like getting the family's money and stuff when his father passed away. And the opportunity to eventually lead the family. It was a big deal. Something Esau had that Jacob wanted. In short, it was a really big deal. I mean, nothing you would ever sell for any price. And yet, it was also something a firstborn son would have to wait to enjoy. And Esau didn't want to wait. He was hungry right now. And so, he agreed to Jacob's offer. Yeah, sure. I'll sell you my rights as firstborn. What good are they to me anyway? It's not like I can eat them if I literally die. Now, let's be real. Esau was not about to die of starvation. But Jacob gave Esau some lentil stew, and with that, Esau gave away his rights as the firstborn son. So was that the end of it? I mean, Esau just got a bad deal buying the world's most expensive bowl of lentil soup? Sadly, no. Because of Esau's impatience, many bad things happened, including a lot of fighting within the family. Esau wouldn't wait, and so he missed out on a lot of good things. The end. Wow, that's a powerful lesson about waiting. But also kind of, what's the word? A bummer. Yeah, just think about how bad Esau must have felt once he finished that stew and realized what he had done. It's true. A lot of bad things did follow Esau's choice. But guess what? Eventually the brothers made up because no matter how impatient we get, God never gives up on us. So... What's our part in the story? Patience is waiting until later for what you want now. So when you think there's no way you can wait, like Esau, stop and think again. Like when you have to wait for screen time until after you finish your homework or chores. You can get mad and yell at your mom and maybe completely lose your screen time. Or you can ah, take a deep breath. And remember, your mom probably put that rule in place to help you, even if it doesn't feel like it right now. It can also be super hard to wait if dad says you can't have a snack because it's too close to dinner time. Or to wait until your birthday to get something you really, really, really want now. Exactly. That's what I do. Waiting is tough, but God promises to give us patience when we ask. When we follow Jesus, God sends the Holy Spirit to live inside us. Patience is a gift from God's spirit. And waiting time doesn't have to be wasted time. Yeah, you could use that time to do something creative. Or find a way to help someone out. Yes and yes. Well, I'm still not a huge fan of waiting, but I can see how God can help you wait. That's great. We'll see you guys next time. If you can wait that long. (laughs) So, here's the thing. When you think you can't wait, think twice.
Now do we get to finally finish our watermelon explosion? Still out of rubber bands, but I did put together this special montage to reward your patience. Oh. That was awesome sauce! Hey, what, what's that sound? What, what's going on? Remember how you chose to give this up and wait for something better? Oh, right, yeah. It's coming. What's coming? Your chocolate bar. Oh, right, right there's fine, right there's fine. Thank you. All right, see you guys next time. Thank you. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, uh, here it is, your chocolate bar. <sighs> it's, it's beautiful. So worth the wait. Yeah. Thanks for joining us in the story lab. See, See you, you next time. time. Well, open oh, it up, oh, yeah, yeah. Open it up. Oh. yeah. 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 Mm. Look at that! Oh, it smells so good! Oh, it smells so, so good. chocolatey!